right, uh, moving on to the next topic. We are going to be dealing with um, lines, parallel lines, perpendicular lines, uh, so on and so forth. We're going to be doing this IB exam style. All right. Now, uh, question one. The diagram uh, shows the straight line L1. Uh, you got this point, negative 9, negative 1. M is negative 3, positive 2, and C are up here. So we have two uh, points. We don't know what C is. Find the gradient of L. Okay, well, gradient is just a fancy word for saying uh, slope. And uh, slope is just rise over run. So if I were to basically work this out, um, that's pretty easy, honestly. So it would just be... Um, let me actually write this down here. Uh, gradient is equal to rise over run. Which means I got to basically take, take the differences in the y's divided by the differences in the x's. Uh, this is actually taking a little too long, so I'm actually going to do it on this one, I think. I'm just looking for a safe place to actually type all this stuff. There you go. Rise over run. So I got to take the differences in the y's divided by the differences in the x's. So looking at it, um, in the numerator, I am going to have uh, 2 minus negative 1. I just did that one, that minus that one. And then in the bottom, I'll have negative 3 minus uh, negative 9, basically. Uh, we'll set that equal to m. So m is equal to all this. Cool. And uh, yeah, so we can simplify that a little bit, can't we? Um, this will just equal 2 plus 1 on top, negative 3 plus 9 on the bottom. Okay. And uh, yeah, the numerator is just going to become uh, 3. And uh, 9 minus 3 is 6, isn't it? Super easy. Oh, that simplifies, doesn't it? 3 over 6, that's obviously going to simplify. And we should always simplify on these exams. Uh, don't leave your answers in like 3 over 6. If you can simplify it, you should simplify it to 1 over 2. Okay, so that's the answer to the first one. 1 over 2. Super. Uh, yeah, sorry about that weird edit. I, uh, I got pretty sick and tired of waiting for all of those images to load, so I just made a new LaTeX file. Okay. Uh, all right. M is the midpoint of AC. Find the coordinates of point C. Okay. Well, remember, the way that the midpoint um, works is that it's the halfway point between uh, the x's and it's the halfway point between the y's. So why don't we first calculate what, uh, why don't we first calculate just the x's, okay? Just looking at the x's, so first negative 3 is going to equal what? It's, well, it's going to be the halfway point between negative 9 and the x-coordinate of c. It's going to be the halfway point between them. When we say halfway point, that would have to mean negative 9 plus whatever the x value is for c cut in half. All right, so we're really just looking for the solution to this thing right here. The negative 9 is going to be for point A, and x is going to be for point C. Uh, negative 3 is the x value. It's the halfway point between the two. All right. Um, cool. So this is just some good old algebra now, and... Uh, we are A-OK -okay with that, I believe. All right, so how about we uh, just 
multiply both sides by two. Uh, not negative two, two. All right, so let's multiply both sides by two. All right, uh, these twos will obviously cancel out, which is fine and dandy. All right, and what are we left with? We are left with two minus three, which is just negative one. And that will just equal negative nine plus X. You can add nine to both sides now. Whew. Takes a little while to code that. You add nine to both sides, that cancels out, and negative nine uh, or negative one plus nine is going to be positive eight, and that will equal x. So the x value for point C is eight. All right, now we're just going to repeat this process for the y's. Okay. Um, so let's make another little algebra equation here. Uh, it's going to be two is going to equal the halfway point between negative 1 and uh, y. So negative 1 plus y over 2. Okay, now we're doing this equation right here, which is fine because we can actually now multiply both sides by 2. Okay, multiply both sides by two, just like before. Um, the twos on the right will cancel out. Okay, and uh, what are you left with? You're left with, well, two times two is just four. So that's gonna be that on the, on the left. And it'll be negative 1 plus y, which is just fine, right? Hey, look, we can add 1 to both sides. Cool. Uh, and these cancel out, and 4 plus 1 is now y. Okay, so the answer should be, in the end, um, eight five that should be the point c this is yet this would be your final answer for that okay so and visually it looks right this should be eight and then five which is just fine okay uh 1c find the equation of l2 oh wait line l2 is perpendicular to l1 and it passes through point m Find the equation of L2, give your answer in this form, AX plus BY plus D equals zero, where A, B, and D, um, the way that you read this is A, B, and D are integers, they're whole numbers. This little symbol means um, is an element of, and this little Z actually means integers. So we're talking about whole numbers now. All right, step one, since uh, L2 is perpendicular to L1, what is its slope? Well, recall that uh, the slope of L1 was uh, 1 half, right? The slope of L1 is 1 half. So that means that the slope of the perpendicular line is going to be the negative reciprocal of that, meaning I got to change the sign and flip it upside down. So instead of it being positive one half, it's gonna be negative two. All right. Now, uh, it also says it passes through the point M where M is negative three, two. So what I can do is I can actually use something called the uh, point gradient form of uh, the point gradient form of the equation, which is just uh, Y minus Y one on top and x minus x1 on the bottom, where uh, 
x x1 y1 is on the line it could be any point on the line and in particular I'm going to use this point right here m okay so uh, my slope is negative 2 and it's going to be y minus something on the top divided by x minus something on the bottom and so it'll be y minus 2 on the top and x minus minus 3 which is x plus 3 on the bottom okay this is actually my equation for the line but uh, we're not done you know it wants it in this one this is called the general form of a line uh, so we actually need to play around with this until we get it to where we want it to be so for that let's actually set up the good old algebra okay and uh, the first thing we're going to want to do is uh, multiply both sides by the denominator which is x plus 3 Okay, and on the right we'll have x plus 3. So first thing we're going to want to do is multiply both sides by x plus 3. And, uh, oh, what do you know? On the left, um, that's going to cancel out, right? So that's nice. The x plus 3's on the right actually cancel out, which is nice. So in the end, I am actually going to end up with y minus 2 on the right uh, nice so the general form says I can't have any parentheses so uh, yeah might as well distribute this negative 2 while I'm here uh, so on the left we'll have negative 2x and then negative 2 times 3 is minus 6 which is fine cool now uh, I just got to bring both of these over to the left because it says that the general form you got to set it equal to zero. Okay, that's fine. So let's, uh, you know, let's subtract y from both sides and add two to both sides. So minus y plus two. You know, just got to cancel this stuff out. And uh, all right, that's great. So on the left we're going to have, and it wants uh, the x's first, the y's second, and everything else uh, last. So I'll have negative 2x minus y, and uh, it's going to be negative 6 plus, uh, plus 2, which is minus 4, and that will equal 0. Okay, this is your final answer right here. That's what they want. Okay, now it's worth 3 marks, not bad. Now. It then says the point N, which is K4, is also on L2. Find the value of K. Oh, that's easy. All I got to do is just take um, my equation that I got in the last answer and plug in the number 4 for Y. You know? So uh, how about we do that right now? So I'm going to take this equation and uh, plug in 4 and see what I get for X. So this will be negative 2X... Um, 4 and then minus 4 and that'll equal 0 so now I just you know why not I just plug in 4 for y uh, okay so what do I got on the left now might as well simplify it negative 4 minus 4 is just minus 8 is equal to 0 cool well uh, let's just get x by itself now shall we so add 8 to both sides perfectly valid move and uh, we're gonna have negative 2x is equal to 8 you know you add 8 to both sides great now uh, I need to divide both sides by negative 2 perfectly valid move You know, and uh, oh look, look what cancels out. That's pretty nice. So these actually will cancel out, 
and uh, you will be left it's weird and you'll be left with that oh eight divided by negative two well that's pretty easy I know my times tables and a positive divided by a negative is a negative so that just simplifies to negative four and that's my answer okay so when you got this weird point you and it, it tells you oh y is equal to four well okay plug in four you know plug in four for y see what x is equal to that's easy okay uh, so that was two marks. Find the distance between points M and N. Okay. Well, here I need to utilize the uh, distance uh, formula. First of all, um, M is what? Remember, M is negative 3, ne uh, positive 2. So we might as well write that down negative 3, positive 2, and n is, uh, what do we say, negative 4, positive 4. Okay, so we might as well write these two points down. Now it says find the distance between these two points. Okay, I'm totally fine with that. Recall that the distance formula uh, is the square root of um, y1 minus y2 squared plus x1 minus x2 squared. This is the distance formula. And it's actually based off of the, uh, you, it's based off of the Pythagorean theorem a little bit. It's usually called the Euclidean distance between two points. Um, it's really not that bad. So uh, doing that now, you're going to just, you know, just plug it in. So what do you get? Well, you're going to get, uh, all right, how about 2 minus 4? Uh, okay, 2 minus 4. And then over here, you're going to have, well, all right, negative 3 minus, minus 4. So that's negative 3 plus 4 squared. So all I did for this first one is I just plugged in my numbers. All right, and it looks like I'm about to run out of room, so I'm going to push this to the next page so that way I have room. Okay, um, right, might as well pull out my calculator. Why would I think when I don't have to, you know? So hide the large display, Meh. plug it in. You know, all right, square root, um, cool, 2 minus 4 squared, and negative 3 plus 4 squared. The answer is 2.236. That's the distance between M and N. Not bad. Okay. Um, that's easy. So, all right, 1F, given that the length of AM is the square root of 45, okay, find the area of the triangle ANC. Okay. All right, so N is going to be up here somewhere. Right, ne negative four, positive four. It's going to be right about here, and it wants to know what's the area of A and C, this big triangle right here. Okay. It says the length of A M is the square root of forty-five. Okay. Well, I got to use a little bit of what I know to figure out what I don't know. Okay. Um, couple of things. In fact, you know what would be good is if I had my whiteboard. Uh, applications, let's pull up the whiteboard app. 
So it's always good to have a have your own sketch. Okay, so I'm actually going to reorient this triangle a little bit. M is the midpoint. This is A. This is N. No, no, that's not N. That was C. My bad. This is okay. Come on. This is C. Up here is going to be N. Recall that N is on L2 and L2 is perpendicular to L1. All right. And what we want to know is what is the area of this triangle. And they tell us that this from A to M is the square root of 45. Well, I got to use what I know. All right. Um, first of all, the distance from N to M, we actually calculated that in the last problem, 1E. And the distance from N M to N is 2.236, you know? Okay, 2.236. What else do I know? Well, M is the midpoint between A and C. So that means that this distance on the left also has to be this distance on the right. So square root of 45 over here as well. And uh, what's the question asking? It wants to know what's the area of the triangle. Well, there are two area formulas we can use, and I think the most basic one will be just fine right here. The most basic area formula is one half base times height. What is the base? Well, it's two times the square root of 45. Okay. Uh, so one half two times, what, what is half the distance of between A and C? It's the square root of 45. And the height is 2.236. So all I got to do is just take my height, which I already have in my calculator, multiply it by uh, square root of 45, and then I'm done. Okay, so I'm just going to say times the square root of 45. 15. There you go. The area of this triangle, <clears throat> the area of this triangle is 15 because of all of that. Super duper. <clears throat> All right, uh, moving on. So here we go. Consider this function. Uh, sketch the graph of f of x for uh, this window. Okay, well, um, it looks like I'm just glancing through the problem. It seems like we're allowed to use our calculator, and I hope so <laughs> anyway. So let's do it. Okay, go to y equals and uh, just type this in. Open burrito for your fraction. 27 divided by x squared. Close for the fraction. Uh, minus 16x. Nice. Now it says it has a very specific domain and uh, or a very specific domain and a very specific range. So we might as well input that specifically. So let's go to window. The x minimum will change to negative 4. The x maximum will change to 3. x scale really only applies to histograms and uh, same thing with y scale. The y minimum it looks like is negative 50. The y maximum is 100. Cool. Let's hit graph. See what we get. Uh, oh, I have a stat plot. Let's turn that stat plot off. Cool. All right. So this is actually my uh, graph. This sketches the graph. Okay. Now use your graphic display calculator to find the zero of f of x. When it says it wants to find the zero, it wants to find this little point right here. Let's get the large display going. It wants this point right here. That's what it means to calculate a zero. Easy. Second, calc. Zero. Okay, put your point to the left of that thing. All right, right about there is fine. Yeah, I'm to the left of the zero. Let's go to the right of the zero. Mm -hmm. And I guess, so 1.191, 1 1.191, 1 1.1191. Okay, so that's that. Use your graphic display calculator to find the coordinates of the local minimum point. 
All of these are just uh, calculator problems. All right, so it wants this point right here, a local minimum right here. Easy, second calc minimum. Got to go to the left of that, so I'll just left arrow until I'm to the left of it. Okay, that's okay. I got to go to the right of it. Yep, and I got to guess, somewhere in the middle right about. There's fine, cool. The minimum is negative 1.5 and then 36. All right, use your graphing display calculator to find the equation of the uh, tangent line, I think, to the graph at this point, negative two, 38.75. Uh, Give your answer in this form. All right, so this is gonna require a little bit of work, but it's really not that bad. Okay, so first I wanna find out what is the slope at uh, this point. Easy, I gotta find the derivative at negative two. So let's go to second calc, and I wanna calculate the derivative, and I'm just gonna type in negative two. All right, so that is my uh, slopey slope. And um, cool, negative 9.25. And I'm at this point right here. So uh, if there is a way to make it display the equation uh, for the tangent line, I don't know what that is. So instead of doing all that, I'm actually going to just uh, do the algebra which is fine. I'm gonna use point gradient form. Remember, point gradient form is just going to be y minus y1 over x minus x1. Okay. Going to use this thing right here. Okay, so on the left, let's get the large display back. On the left, my slope is uh, negative, uh, negative 9.25. And on the right, I'm gonna have y minus any y point. So let's do 38.75. And on the bottom, I'll have x minus minus two, which is x plus two. extra brace yep all right now it wants this in y equals mx plus b form and uh, of course we are happy to oblige we're just going to do a little bit of algebra here which is not a problem for high-powered seniors like us am i right so first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to multiply both sides by Come on, by x plus two. Okay, multiply both sides by x plus two. Totally fine, uh, these actually cancel cancel, which is awesome. I cannot spell. Okay, these cancel out, and what do we have on the left? We're gonna have all of this, and on the right, we're gonna have y minus 38.75. All right, we're almost done. Uh, let's distribute this negative 9.25. I think that's a totally valid move. So negative 9.25 minus 18.5, if I'm doing that right. Okay, so I just distributed uh, this negative 9.25, pretty good. And let's add 38.75 to both sides and then we'll get y by itself. Which is a-okay. Uh, that should be a plus, okie dokie. All right, and uh, do I feel like thinking? No. So instead of doing all of that, I'm just going to 
do this. Negative 18.5 plus 38.75. Don't feel like thinking. Okay, 20.25. So my final answer should be y uh, is equal to negative 9.25x plus 20.25. And that is the equation for my tangent line. There you go. Okay, I gave it in y equals mx plus b form. Pretty nice. And uh, that, that about does it for number two, pretty good. Okay, so I am going to let you all do uh, three and uh, four. You should be adequately prepared now. Three says the coordinates of point A are six, negative seven. The coordinates of point B are negative six, two. Point M is the midpoint of AB. Um, it says L1 goes through A and B. Okay. And L2 is perpendicular to L1. And it passes through some point M, which is the midpoint. All right. Write down the equation of L2. So here you're going to have to take all of the steps that was laid out in number one, really, to figure out everything you need to figure out. Step one, what is the slope of L2? Well, it's the negative reciprocal of the slope of L1 because they're perpendicular. So step one, what is the slope of L1? Well, L1, it's rise over run. That's what the gradient is. So you gotta take the differences in the y's divided by the differences in the x's, that's the slope of L1. Once you have that, you gotta change the sign and flip it upside down and that will be the the slope of L2. Okay, now the other thing is it says it passes through M where M is the midpoint. So first you have to find the midpoint between A and B. Remember the midpoint is just the halfway point between the X's and the halfway point between the Y's. If you want to find the halfway point you add them together and divide it by 2. So I can do I can do the X's right now. 6 plus negative 6 divided by 2. Well, 6 plus negative 6 happens to be 0, and 0 divided by 2 is 0. So the, the x value for this midpoint is 0. Do the same thing for the y's, and then you got that. Now you've got your midpoint. All right, well, I would use point gradient form. Okay, so you'll have your slope on the left. You know, point gradient form. So you have your slope on the left, and I would put your midpoint here in on the right. And then do some fancy algebra to get it into... Um, this one, y equals mx plus b form. That's that. Now for number four, this one looks pretty interesting. Line L intersects the x-axis at point A and the y-axis at point B as shown in this cool diagram. The length of line segment OB is three times the length of the line segment OA, where O is the origin. All right. Cool. Find the gradient of L. All right. Well, that doesn't seem too bad, honestly. I mean, <laughs> that that's actually super, super easy. <laughs> this one, I, I, I already know the answer. I haven't even done any work. And I'm like, oh yeah, that's obvious, okay? Remember, rise over run. What's the change in the Y divided by the change in the X? Okay, that's easy. Uh, point two six does lie on L. Find the equation of L in this form. Again, I would use point gradient form, just like in the last several problems. Okay, uh, find the x coordinate of point A. Oh, that's easy. What's special about point A? Well, it's the x intercept, meaning the y value has to equal zero. So if you want to find the x coordinate of point A, well, plug in zero for y and solve for x. That's it. So three and four are easy enough for you all to do on your own. Okay, if you have any questions, just let me know. Take care and uh, I'll see you in class. Bye-bye.